Welcome to the channel. Today will be a quick gaming and tech related video regarding my Vanquish 295 pre-built computer from EK Fluid Gaming. I picked the computer up about two months ago in San Antonio, directly at the EK Fluid Gaming facility. Uh, I only live about 20 or 30 minutes away, and they were very nice and let me actually come up there, pick it up, and we could actually cut out any potential issues with shipping or shipping damages or anything like that. And the bonus was I didn't have to pay for shipping, which... Anyways, this is, as I said before, the Vanquish 295 from EK Fluid Gaming and actually uh, is their top tier NVIDIA card uh, pre-built option. It comes with a Ryzen 9 5950X, the NVIDIA 3090, which is the Zotac Trinity overclock variation. Not the best GPU, not the worst, uh, but hey, it's a 3090, and right now getting any kind of GPU is still kind of a difficult task. Well, it came with 64 gigs of G-Skill, RGB memory, 3200 megahertz, a one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus, four terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive, Asus Prime X570 Pro motherboard, a 1000 watt 80 plus gold power supply. Uh, it has all custom braided power supply cables, a EK Hardline custom water loop, the CPU and GPU, and that does come with dual radiators and uh, it also has the front reservoir here with the pump and it's in the Lian Li PC 011D chassis it comes with three years of warranty and Windows 10 operating system preloaded overall so far I'm pretty happy with the purchase um, I had a minor hiccup uh, right after I picked it up where my memory was showing up as 21 33 megahertz uh, but a quick firmware update of the motherboard resolved that issue and I was able to run my memory at 3200 megahertz of course you are paying extra for the custom water loops and with how availability of parts in general is right now it is expensive but reasonable um, I would like to have seen them using a different GPU than the Zotac which is okay but does have some limitations and with the dual custom water loop that it comes with where the 5950 and the 3090 are all linked together it can get pretty warm if you try to do any kind of major overclocking I was able to do some minor to mid tier overclocking and it would run fine but it would get pretty warm the fans would be spooling up pretty hard and it would got kind of noisy so I actually currently am not running it with any overclock here is the PC as it sits pretty much how you get out of the box I have no overclock supplied I really only updated firmware of the various components drivers of uh, Nvidia uh, and various other things I do have some software installed on here so it's not gonna run quite as fast as it would with a completely brand new fresh install I have some hardware monitoring graphs up here to, to track the CPU temperatures as well as the GPU and I figured I'll just run a few performance tests real quick and so you can kind of get an idea of what to expect from your 295 as well. And you will hear the fans ramp up pretty good. It ramps up initially and then kind of levels off. So in gaming you don't really notice it, but if you're doing like individual tests, you might hear it kind of ramp up a little bit more frequently than you would in real life testing or work.
And there is the result, an 18,235 in Time Spy. 19,356 graphics score, 13,731 CPU score, and it does uh, pretty good overall. We'll do a quick compare here. And 99% uh, better than all results. Uh, of course, this is probably some fancy super overclocked machine right here, because it is a older setup 2020, but uh, not bad, not overclocked. That's a right off the box score. I am able to overclock it, and I was able to get, I believe, into 20,000. Let's see here. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Uh, looks like I was able to get. Nineteen thousand one ninety, um, nineteen thousand zero sixty seven, some high eighteen thousands. So with some tweaking and some little minor overclocking, without any heat issues, I was able to get it there. But the difference in gaming was I didn't really notice a difference, so I just pretty much went back to the default settings. I'll go ahead and kick off another test here. And as for the heat like the hottest that the CPU saw was 68 degrees or so, uh, 69 maybe, GPU memory, uh, looks like it got to high 60s, and then the GPU itself looks like it didn't even hit quite hit 60, so I'm still pretty good and well within some good tolerances. Um, did hear the fans ramp up some. Uh, I could tweak the fan curve a little bit better, but just haven't really been a factor for me. We can give a quick run on Port Royal for ray tracing and uh, see what that looks like. And there we have it, a 12,901. Be cool if they let you uh, do a drop down for 4K, but uh, I guess that's asking too much. And a quick compare. About the 95%, pretty good overall. I believe I ran this one before with some overclocking, but uh, may have been a while. Yeah, it looks like I was able to get 13,000, almost 14,000. So, 
Not bad at all. And we'll get this situated. Sorry for the bad camera angles here. And why not do some times by extreme, but before, look at the temperatures here. Really barely hitting any kind of, you know, 72 on memory, 61 on the GPU itself. And looks like our biggest spike on the CPU was not even hitting 60. So, so for times by extreme, kick that off here. Try to angle it down a little bit better so we can maybe see the uh, frame rate information at the bottom here. I'm on a 48 inch uh, LG C1 monitor, so it's pretty big. And then also a 3440, 1440, uh, ultra wide on my left screen here that has the graphs and whatnot on it. There we go. A 9,792. Here are the temperatures. Looks like a CPU hit a little over 70 degrees. GPU memory, 72. And the GPU, 61-ish. Not too bad. Do a quick compare here. And it says we are better than 96% of all results, which doesn't really mean much. Um, yeah, so uh, you may have tried to run this previously when I had it overclocked. And let's see here. Oh, maybe not. 
Looks like I have ran it before and got a little over 10,000, so not a huge difference. I think that was with maybe a minor overclock. And that pretty much wraps up the quick little um, benchmark test I figured I'd show you with this uh, 295 here. And I guess I'll run a few in-game built-in uh, benchmark tests so you can kind of see some real world and how it looks with that. So we'll go ahead and jump to those. Here we are with a little bit of Doom Eternal. And we'll go ahead and look at the settings here. Running in 4K, have pretty much everything at HDR, everything enabled, even a little bit of motion blur, field of view is pulled out, not quite all the way, but pretty close. And everything is in Ultra Nightmare. Ray tracing is on. I have DLSS on quality. And then Ultra Nightmare down the board. Uh, I have film grain turned off, uh, depth of field on, chromatic aberrations on. So pretty much almost everything maxed out. And uh, let's take a look. Fortunately, this does not have a built-in benchmark tool. Top right corner does show what the frame rates and what everything looks like. So pretty much pegs at 120 frames get past this intro here. As you see, still 120 frames. Temperatures look like about 61 on the CPU, 72 on memory of the GPU, and 63 on the GPU. And I have it set to 120 because that's uh, what I have my monitor set to. And pretty much still stays maxed out uh, to my screen. Resolution at 120, 4K, even with some action going on here. Uh, yeah, I know it's not a ton, but. Uh All right, that'll round it up for uh, Doom real quick here. You can see uh, the PC pretty much has this game maxed out. Here we have Red Dead Redemption 2. Take a look at the settings here. Fresh rate to match my LG C148 inch. Triple buffering. I have pretty much everything on ultra, even uh, anti-stop trick filtering at X16. I do have 
or shadow at high, reflection high, mirror high. Um, a couple custom in here. I have HDR on, DirectX 12 Ultra, all metric high for a few more as you can see here. Particle Ultra. So pretty much a mix of Ultra and high and for 4K. This game is pretty extensive overall. I know they just recently released, released the DLSS, so I haven't said the quality, so it actually is only a slight upscale and it should look extremely good. And we'll go ahead and benchmark it. Get smoked.
like an average of 83, almost 84 frames per second. Max hit 121, minimum 15. Um, and then if you look at temperatures, they were pretty solid. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, looks like the highest was about 58, maybe almost 60 on the CPU. 72 on the GPU memory and 6162 on the GPU itself. As for benchmarks, I figured I'll finish up with Cyberpunk 2077. I've been playing this recently, so I figured it was a good fitting point. As for graphics, I run most everything on the max setting regarding um, things like your field of view. I have a 95, which is near the max. I have motion blur turned off because it's just annoying. Uh, contact shadows, all the settings pretty much turned up. Uh, local mesh quality is max, shadow quality max, shadow range max. I do have shadow resolution medium because it's not really a noticeable difference visually. Uh, a lot of stuff here at the max setting, but I do have cloud and dynamic decals turned down to high. Screen space reflections is ultra, not mega ultra. I guess there's one setting higher. Uh, all these other settings high. Ray tracing on, all the ray tracing settings on, but I have it set to medium. DLS is auto, just to help with the ray tracing, which is taxing even for a 3090 setup. And then these things down here I have disabled. So it's pretty much about max for 4K. And I believe you can see. Oh, tilt it up a little bit here. Tweak it to the side, and you should be able to see the frames up in the top corner. Definitely don't get 120 even with this setup. But I tend to get low to mid to high 70s, uh, typically about 77, 77, 75. You know, you're looking out the water, getting about 72. I mean, it looks even though I'm taking a video of a screen and not an inbuilt recording, it looks pretty good um, overall. I'm definitely pleased with the game performance, especially how it launched. Thankfully, I waited and started playing it a few months ago for some patches to hit to really take care of the main issues. And a little bit more civilization and I do hit high 60s but my goal really for 4k games that aren't multiplayer is a steady 60 year up anything more than that and is just extra especially with ray tracing DLSS definitely has helped out a lot uh, with pushing your ray tracing abilities up a little higher but here's the pretty crowded area and I'm seeing high 60s low 70s turning around relatively quickly and I'm only recording at 30 frames so it's probably not gonna look quite as nice uh, than what I'm seeing on screen here but yeah that'll round out the benchmarks for now I maybe do uh, I may do a more extensive um, tweaking and benchmarking if anybody's interested in that with this uh, specific uh, EK fluid gaming uh, pre-built vanquish 295 setup just let me know in the comments And there you have it, just a quick overview of the Vanquish 295 that I've had for the last two months. Zero complaints, um, everything's been working out fine for me. I'm able to play 4K, uh, pretty much any game I want, in any fr any frame rate that I want really. I, I do run a LG 48 inch C1 as my main monitor, and then an ultra wide as my secondary monitor. And I do all my gaming on my 48 inch 4K uh, monitor and everything looks great um, zero issues no crashes no weirdness big thing I have to I would say is just make sure you update firmware of all your components uh, make sure you update your software uh, you know Nvidia OS games utilities all that um, really my only minor complaint is I would like to see a different GPU than the Zotac which I know uh, supply is limited so that's probably who they have to deal with um, 
the other complaint would be um, more storage space. They have a four gig traditional hard drive and then a one gig Evo uh, 970, which I mean, so you got one gig for gaming, four gigs for storing photos and videos and stuff like that's pretty limited. First thing I did was add a additional M2 drive and a larger four gig SSG drive. Um, thankfully, installing everything is pretty simple, and the uh, how they have it, the wiring uh, routed is very clean, very easy to add stuff to it, and I mean it looks great uh, inside and out. Even the back cover, underneath the back cover, um, looks good. Everything's clean and uh, routed nicely. And uh, yeah, overall, right when you see it, you're just going to have to make sure you fill it up properly, follow the uh, instructions and you should have a quality uh, PC that should last you for a few years uh, for all the future upcoming games and uh, yeah that's about it so uh, hopefully I'll do some more gaming stuff um, some more tech stuff and of course automotive so stay tuned and uh, feel free to subscribe like comment and uh, definitely let me know what kind of things you like to see all right peace